Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Now this week, the Shamba Shape Up team is in Maseno, which is about half an hour from Kisumu. We are going to meet a determined farmer who is facing unusual challenges. Well, let's go meet him. We know we'll have a lot of work to do, so let's set up our best camp. Now tell me, how long have you lived in this farm? 42 years. 42 years? Yeah. So you are born here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how big is this farm? One acre. One acre farm? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you've been a farmer throughout? No, I was doing another. I was not a farmer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working in Nairobi. You're working in Nairobi? Yeah. Uh-huh. So what happened? Uh, I got an accident. This is for how long have you been in the wheelchair? In the wheelchair, 10 years. 10 years? 10 years. Oh. After I get an accident, Mm. Yeah. Life changes. And, and uh, what are you farming here? Maize uh -huh. and horticulture. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. In support of my brother. Oh, so you're working with your brother in the farm? Yeah. And, and what daily problems are you facing, especially you in your condition, when it comes to farming? Most problem we get is maybe weather. The weather is We're, bad. Mm, yeah. Sometimes. How is your maize doing? Now it's doing good mm -hmm. since I was introduced to push-pull technology mm -hmm. two years back. Mm -hmm. What was the main problem with your maze? Striger. Ah, Striger. Striger. So you had the problem of Striger weeds. Yeah. Uh -huh. And stem borer. And stem borer. Yeah. Which was destroying your crop. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, um, in your daily chores, mm. uh, in a wheelchair, what are some of, some of your challenges? Like, is it difficult to move around yeah, to the house? Uh, in the house. And, yeah. There are some, some small things mm. that I cannot do. Mm -hmm. uh, but right. I, I usually mm. use other means so that I can do on my own, mm. not to depend on my. Oh, you would like to be self, self reliant? Yeah. Ah. Mm. You mentioned something about your door? Yeah. Or? I, I want it to be widened. Oh, the, door, the door could be widened yeah. so that the wheelchair can be able to access in, uh, inside the house. Yeah. Other problem I'm facing is about my poultry. Sometimes uh, you find there's, there's a certain disease that affects them. Right. Mm, which I'm not familiar to eat. Mm -hmm. mm. And how are your cows? My cow is not producing milk. Milk. Uh, You're not getting enough. Enough. Uh -huh. mm. So, Jarius. Um, Shamba Shepherd team is here. Yeah. We've got experts with us. Yeah. They're going to help you with your cows. And then we'll also see what you can do about your chickens. Yeah. About the door. Mm. Mm, we'll see what we can do to help there. Mm. And uh, basically one or two other things in the farm to make sure that you mm. are truly shaped up. I'm happy about that. Uh. Since I know it's better somebody to show you a way than to give you. Ah, uh, that's good, that's good. And trying to show that disability is not? not inability. Inability. Mm. Good, thank you, Jarius. Thank you, thank you. Jarius's chamber has maize, local chickens, cows, a couple of goats, and a lot of happy children who are family and neighbors. Following his road accident in Nairobi, Jarius' wife left him, and he had to come back to Maseno, where he was born. There are three homes on the Shamba, his mother's home, his brother's family home, and Jarius shares a home with two of his four children. They all help Jarius, but he wants to be as independent as possible. This is difficult when he can't even get inside his house easily. Before we meet any experts to help on this Shamba, we need to widen his front door so he can get his wheelchair inside his house. Luckily, we have Shamba Shepa handyman Kariz standing by. I'm going to check out the problems with the cows next. But seems the cow shed is another difficult place for Jarius to access. But I'm sure Kariz can widen that door also. We are going to meet Dr. Kirui from Coopers, who has been taking a look at the cows and has advice for Jarius and his brother Kenneth. Now, Dr. Kirui, yes. after examining Jerry's cow, what can you tell him about the condition of it? 
Okay, thank you. Generally, if you look at the cow, health-wise it's okay, but there's some bit of improvement which should be done. Uh, starting with the body condition, it's a little bit lower because if you see from here, you can count one, two, three, almost four ribs. Uh -huh. That says that the cow is a little bit underfed, uh -huh. especially with proteins. Uh -huh. So you should supplement uh, protein supplements. Uh -huh. And also, if you look at the coat, uh, it should be shiny brown because uh, the cow has brown and white. It should be shiny brown, but at some point you see some kind of discoloration like light brown, showing a deficiency of copper and cobalt, uh -huh. which he, uh, he should uh, supplement with uh, good dairy mineral. There's some kind of loose dung that uh -huh. is. Uh, which shows some kind of worm infestation. Okay. You should do some deworming. Mm -hmm. And uh, the cow is good, but uh, some bit of improvement here and there. What about the condition of the cattle shed, where it's in now? Okay, the condition of the cow shed, the, there's some bit of improvement which should be done. If you look at here, yes. uh, the cow is feeding from the other side and it's dunging here. Yeah. So the dunging area is very close to the feeding uh, trough, mm -hmm. which uh, at the end of the day produces some kind of smell which is not good for the cow. It mm -hmm. will affect uh, the intake of the feed, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, the cow might not uh, feed as, as expected. Also, the feeding trough is a little bit longer. The, the length from here to, to the, the other side is a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. That is why you are seeing the bruises on the neck of the cow, because it's struggling to feed from the other side, mm -hmm. the, the far end. But that's not all. Dr. Kirui has more important advice. There's also one bit we should be should talk about uh, water. Uh, a cow should be provided water at little time. That means free choice. You should give water uh, any time of the day. But if you look at here, we have a, a big sufria without water. But instead, we should provide a trough with water all the day. You should have permanent day. water. Permanent water throughout the day. Good, doctor. Good, good. So, what would you say is the main main point that uh, Jairus should follow right now? Uh, the main point is improving on feeding because uh, nutrition has a direct effect on uh, uh, production, that is milk production. Yes. You know we are interested in improving milk production here. Mm -hmm. So if he, if he does a good uh, feeding, providing yes. the necessary supplements, uh -huh. that is protein and a good dairy mineral, mm -hmm. there will be an improvement especially on body condition and also on fertility because nutrition also plays a role in fertility. That means the cow should calf every year. So Jairus and Kenneth, you've heard what the doctor said, your cows need to be watered all the time, you need to feed it all the time and make sure you use mineral supplements so that the cow can look good and healthy. I think Shamba Shape Up has a lot of work to do right now and I think we better get on with it. Yeah. It is important to have your cows dewormed on a regular basis. This will keep them healthy and give a higher yield of milk. To help maintain a disease-free cow shed, there must be good drainage. The feed trough must be accessible to the cow so as not to cause injury. There must also be a place for a continuous supply of fresh water. One area of Jairus' shamba that is doing very well is his maize. Two years ago, he adapted push-pull technology as a way of farming without pesticides. Crops such as maize or sorghum are intercropped with desmodium. This stops striger weed growing onto the maize and killing it. Desmodium also acts as a repellent to stem borer moths so they are pushed away to the napier grass which is planted around the maize field. So the desmodium will push the moths away from the maize and the napier will pull the moths to the napier as they prefer napier to maize. The moths then lay their eggs in the napier grass instead of the maize. The napier grass then naturally destroys the stem borer larvae. Mr. Dickens is an expert in push-pull technology. Jairus, now could you tell Mr. Dickens how you were doing before the push-pull technology? Uh, before the, before the uh, push-pull technology, I, I was having problems here and there. Mm -hmm. My soil fertility was very low. That is the first thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing, stem borer. Right. Which was affecting my maize. Mm -hmm. third, third is striker. Right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. and Mr. Dickens, now could you tell him how he's doing? Uh, you have done a great thing to adopt push-pull technology mm -hmm. to yeah. help you address the, the problems yeah. that was affecting your farm. Yeah. How much maize were you getting before you adopted the push-pull technology? And how much are you getting now that you have adopted the technology? Uh, before I was getting four gorogoros. So four, one gorogoro equals like two kilograms, two kilograms right? Yes. So that is eight. 
eight kilograms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, now, a sack and above. Oh, a sack and, a sack and, above. and yeah. above. That is uh, 90 to 100, 100 kilograms. Now, uh, with us, we count in Gorogoro. In Gorogoro. Right. That is, it was 56. 56, 56. Gorogoros. Yes. Oh, so mm. that is 112 uh, kil kilograms. Oh, that's a big difference from what you used yes. to get before you adopted the technology and what you are getting now. Mm. That's huge. Striker weed and stem borer can destroy between 30 and even up to 100% of your maize crop. In just two years, Jaros went on from producing just 8 to 112 kilograms of maize using push pull technology. Mr. Dickens goes on to check that Jairus and his brother are managing the push pull properly. Firstly, the desmodium must be weeded. Then the napier grass needs to be cut back. Yes, Jairus, the purpose of cutting the inner line now is because we want to create a, a path between the maze and the, the inner line of napier grass. If the leaves of napier grass is touching the leaves of the maze, the insects that are on the nest can easily crawl back to the maze. So we are creating a barrier between the maze and the inner line of napier grass. And the, also the napier grass has reached the last stage for feeding the animals now. So that is why we are now harvesting it to go and feed the animals and also create the barrier so that the insects don't crawl back to, to the maze in the plot. So with some top tips on management, the push pool will improve the maize crop even more. Jairus also learns that the best way to use it is as a nutritious fodder for his animals. Jairus collects the desmodium and napier grass to chop it down for fodder. This should be mixed in the ratio of one to three. If you put one bucket of desmodium, you put three buckets of napier. Meanwhile, Caris has finished the improvements to the cow shed. The trough has been improved and so the cow can access the food without getting injured. And there is a separate place for good access to clean water. Also, the cow shed gate has been widened for Jarius to access easily. Naomi, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, we've just been dewarming the cows, mm -hmm. making a new trough, mm -hmm. right? And making sure basically that Jarius cows are healthy. That's great, because that's you? the reason why we are here, uh -huh. the trough. Uh -huh. We have animal feed. Aha, uh -huh. what kind of feed is this, Jarius? This one is napier mm -hmm. and desmodium. Napier and desmodium? Yeah, which I got from my shamba, mm -hmm. push pull technology. Oh, you use the push pull? Yes. And now you've got your cattle feed? Yeah. All right, now that we are here, let's feed it. The napier and desmodium mix provides good quality food. But we must not forget the supplements needed to improve the milk yield. Coopers recommend Maclick Super and Cooper Cooler. You must always follow the feeding instructions on the bags. The cows love it. Don't forget the water. Now me, you know what? Jada's determination to improve his shamba is just inspiring. And it's great to have experts give us top tips. Yes, and there's still more to do right here on Shamba Shepherd. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are here at Maseno, just near Kisumu, at Jairus Farm. And Jairus wants to prove to us that disability is not inability. Yeah. <laughs> We've also had expert advice on his dairy cow and push pull technology. But there's still loads to be done right here on Shamba, Shamba Shape, Shape Up. Up. In the evenings, Jairus makes beets to sell to earn a little extra income. Jairus, how long have you been doing this bead work? Two years back. Uh, this one I was taught by uh, one of the support group in, in Maseno. Does it help you? You know, with upkeep, um, do you make money out of it? Help me to buy paraffin. Uh-huh. Uh, to support myself with the house. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jairus, I see you use a kerosene lamp. So how much does it cost? Per day, I usually use 30 bob per day. That's about over 200 Over 200. A week? Yeah. Does it affect your health? Yes, yeah, sometimes when I, I'm doing this work for a longer period, mm -hmm. I usually find soot in my nose. Right. And I find that when the, the sun is too hot, right. I find myself I cannot, I cannot see very far. Oh. Uh, 
Lami, what's going on? Hmm, Jera's showing me his beat work. Mm -hmm. He tells me this lamp is so expensive. I mean, he can't, you know, and he can't see with it, and it's, it's a lot of pain to his eyes. Wow, they're mm -hmm. lovely beads. Mm, they're beautiful, aren't they? Right, but I cannot see all of them. Let me see if I can shed a little light to the situation. One, two, three, four. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> These are terrific, they look lovely, yeah. right? What do you think, Jairus? Uh, this one is better than that, the one I was using. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now you can see your bead work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a daylight solar lamp, right? And I've got a solar panel, which you can use. Uh -huh. No more kerosene, no more paraffin, smoke in the room, no more. Because this one uses the sun, which is absolutely Free. free. Nobody's charging you for the sun, Jairus. Yeah. Now, if someone brings you the bills, just tell them, no way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So you like it? Yeah. And it's very easy to use, and it's from D-Light. And you're doing a great job here with the beads. Naomi, are you going to buy some? Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. Uh -huh. I love this. Kerosene lamps are expensive and can be dangerous. A solar light from D-Light is durable in tough conditions and is portable. Once you have a daylight lamp, it is recharged for free in the sun, making it cheap to run. No more kerosene costs. I leave Naomi to her shopping, as we have an expert from Kenchik on hand to look at Jairus' local chicken. Now Jairus, you've got lots of chickens here. How many are they? They are 31. 31. Okay. Now I've brought Dr. Dennis here, he's an expert from Kenchik and is going to answer all the questions you've got and maybe address any concerns that you may have, right? Yes. You may start asking questions now. My first problem is diseases mm -hmm. and predators. Second one is predators. Mm -hmm. The part of uh, predators, yeah. I'll advise that uh, uh, Jairus, eh? yeah. we put up a, a run here yeah. that is covered at the top yeah. so that um, uh, you, you, your chicken are protected. Okay, for the diseases, yeah. then uh, first of all, we'll need to improve the general uh, hygiene uh, of the place. Yeah. And then also um, vaccination, very important because we understand you lose your buds if you don't protect them. Yeah. Again, it's these viral diseases that can easily be prevented by vaccination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there, is there any particular reason, Jairus, that you have placed these chickens under this tree? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this tree is a medicine. It's medicinal? Yeah. Do you concur with that? Yeah, yeah this is a <laughs> moringa tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you all know, moringa tree uh, has medicinal value. Wow. And uh, on, on top of that, uh, when the chicken feed on uh, the leaves from Moringa, mm -hmm. they also get uh, important uh, vitamin because it's, it's green. Ah, yeah. Doc, I can see that Jairus has tethered his chicken using some pieces of string, yeah. I don't know, attached to a wood. Is that proper? Uh, not at all, it's not proper. Why not? Because by tying them, the birds are not able to express their normal behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, browsing. Ah. And then again, it can cause injury to the, to the uh, birds. You know, this string can tighten and mm. then, you know, maybe cause some injuries to the, to the bird. So the general welfare the of general the birds, yeah, yeah, is infringed, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and their rights are also <laughs> infringed on. <laughs> you know, animals also have rights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good, good. It's a very busy shepherd for Karis. Now that he has finished in the cow shed, I need him to help me build a chicken run. <laughs> to build a basic chicken run, you need wooden posts, Wood preserve, nails, wire mesh. The dimensions are 10 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 4 feet high. Remember to make a laying box in the corner and somewhere where you can get in and out to collect your eggs. So, Jairus, your chicken run is coming up very, very well yeah. under this moringa tree. Yeah. You told me that's medicinal yeah. for the chickens. Yeah. Can I try one? Try. Okay, here we go. So I just need to chew on it. Thank you. 
While work continues on the chicken run outside, I take a look at another problem inside. Goodness, this is where Jairus has to cook. It's in a corner, so it's very difficult for him, especially being in a wheelchair. Uh, it's also in his bedroom, so it's very unhealthy. So let's see what the Shamba Ship Up team can do. I ask Alice to build a brick stand under the window as I have something to put on it. So Jairus, mm. now here is a new Jiko stove. You know what's so good about it? It uses very little firewood. Yeah? yeah, it also cooks so quickly, so you have you have you're able to do most of the things in the house, yeah. right? Mm. It also is almost smokeless, meaning it's very good for your health. Yeah, doesn't that sound great? It's great. What do you say? I'm very happy. I know my first my health will improve mm -hmm. since I use that uh, normal jiko. Yeah. I find myself soot in the in the nose. In the nose. Right. Yeah. Second is. Uh, less man on firewood, uh -huh. and it will make my my children to have a shorter time so that they can revise yeah. in the evening. Right. Yeah. And when they come for lunch, they find lunch is ready because it cooks quickly. Yeah. That's great. Karis also made you a brick stand, yeah? yeah, which is very nice because it's safe. Yeah. And you can saw your your wood yeah. under, right? Plus, it's raised so you can cook from right where you're seated. Yeah. I'm very glad about that. Since you see my house is too small, right. I didn't have any place I can put my firewood. Mm -hmm. Now I'm able to use this small. Yes. Yeah. Another thing, maybe I, do, I, I won't need anybody to, 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 to assist me mm -hmm. uh, for bringing me firewood. Yeah, because with, with just little firewood, you're able to cook your evening meal. Yeah. This is a Jiko from Easy Life. It improves average wood fuel use by 50% and also reduces indoor air pollution. Plus, Easy Life Jiko improves cooking efficiency, meaning food cooks faster and saving time that can be applied to other tasks. Now, I wonder how Tony is getting on. The Jairus chicken run is finished. What do you think of it? It's nice. It will, it will keep away small problem I was getting. Mm -hmm. Predators and diseases. Oh, yeah. good. We've got an entrance here which you can place in water and the drinkers. Fantastic. Okay. Hey. Wow, Naomi. Oh. What have you got for hey. us? This is really nice. I didn't think it would be like this. <laughs> wow. You are impressed, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, good. Well, it wouldn't be complete without this for our lucky chickens to drink from ah. and to yeah. eat from. So the drinkers and the feeders. Yes. Exactly. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you so much. Now, Doc, now that we've got the drinkers and the feeders, now what's next? Now that we've got the drinkers and feeders, I think uh, we'll not have a problem of uh, infection here because Jaira's chicken are going to feed on uh, uncontaminated feed mm -hmm. and then the water will be clean and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to vaccinate the chickens against Newcastle disease. It's an important disease because it causes huge losses to farmers. Uh -huh. I'll bring it, I brought with me a Newcastle disease vaccine. We're going to vaccinate the birds. We feel the new feeders. The doctor put the vaccine into a bucket of water and then fills the drinkers so the chickens will be protected from Newcastle disease. This vaccine is available at Agrovets. Always read the instructions on the label. The new drinkers and feeders mean extra disease prevention. The chickens are all put in a new run under the moringa tree so they can still feed on the leaves and they will be protected from predators. They must feel right at home as they have already laid eggs. Jairus, it's been great shaping up your shamba. How do you feel? I feel great. Nobody will support me mm -hmm. anymore. Oh, Jerry, you are an inspiration to many. And you are living proof that disability is not inability. Right here on Shamba Shape Up. Attention, farmers. I'm here to talk about a very serious disease. It's not a human disease. It's, it's a, a maze disease, and we'll get a real expert. Now, Joshua, I want to know what is going on here because I believe that maize are supposed to be green. I'm not seeing green, I'm seeing spots of yellow, I'm seeing dried leaves. What exactly is this disease? This chamber 
has been affected by a disease known as maize lethal necrosis disease. This disease is caused by two viruses, uh, which causes the plant to die because they interfere with the, the plant nutrition. And how exactly does the virus affect the maize? They block the, 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 the plant from making food through the leaves and also from taking the, the food from the soil through the roots. And at what particular stage does it affect the maize plant? This virus affects the maize at all stages of growth. It will attack the maize as young as uh, two weeks old and it will attack the maize that is forming the cob. Mm -hmm. I wish to confirm that if this farmer does not remove this maize from this field, he does not expect any harvest from here because all the maize will all turn this color here. Okay. Mm. And what are the symptoms of the viruses in the maize? As you can see from this field, the symptoms of the virus is that uh, the maize starts turning yellow, yellow mm -hmm. spots, mm -hmm. and then the spots co any, coalesce to form a complete yellow color of the, of the leaves. Mm -hmm. And then later on, the maize, uh, the leaves start to dry. Now, is there a solution? Yes, there are several solutions to this problem. What should a farmer do? The farmer, first of all, should plant certified seed. Second, we recommend farmers also to do crop diversification. And third, we, we, we are insisting that farmers should practice closed season where they rotate maize with another crop. There, you've heard it. Right here on Shamba Shepherd.